jazz music to listen to. And from northeastern Ohio, let's go take a look. This is Dave Cutterwell and welcome to ArtsQuest. We're here with Josh Rezepka, going to be right. learning a little bit about his music. Now, this is like your first album? Yeah, the that, first, first album. And you wrote everything on here? Uh, yeah, every, every track. I mean, that's pretty unusual. Yeah, I guess it's probably customary to do a couple covers uh, on, a, on a CD, but uh, I tried to get myself out there and push myself to write write my own material. Yeah. I mean, for such a creative person, you have short hair, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when did it start to, uh, like, get into your mind that you were going to be a composer? Because, truthfully, most musicians are not composers. They play other people's stuff, and maybe they play a little differently, but to actually depart into your own world, I mean, how do you, what do the first steps feel like? Um, well, I guess like a year ago, I decided I was going to write music. Um, I decided I was going to record a CD, so I figured One I'd, year ago, you thought you might write music. Yeah. Yeah, a year ago, I decided, hey, I'm going to make a CD of original music. And, huh. and then I figured, well, if that's the case, I'd better get busy and start writing. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I wrote a couple of assignments for school, you know, like a blues, and, but I hadn't written prior to that. So a yeah. uh, uh, lot of time on the piano. Just working with harmonies and melodies, and I'll walking around, and melody will pop in my head, and then I'll I'll try and remember it or jot it down, or and then okay. work I, from there. I think most of our audience can relate with the idea of like writing a letter or writing a paper, maybe. How is writing music different from what it feels like to write a letter? Oh, um, well. When you write a letter, it's usually pretty uh, direct. You know, you're always writing it to somebody. Um, if, if I said to you, write a letter to me um, about this, you know, a certain thing, well, you would write that. And, but if I said to you, write a song about, some, about the same content, um, music is, is so abstract. There's, there's no one sound that is a direct reflection of, of any one object. A little bit more universal in application and can be interpreted well, different yeah, ways? Yeah, different interpretations for sure. Um, but because of that, you never really know, or at least I never really know what I'm going to come up with in the end. You know, it's kind of like, I guess I would say the way I write music would be like writing a letter and by the time you're done with the letter, then you look it over and you see what it's about, and then you figure out who to send it to. Now let's pretend that this is 100 years from now, and you've oh. like done 40 albums, and you're this world-famous composer, and you're the guy who's giving a synopsis of who you were as an artist with your work, with your oh, first yeah. album. Yeah. What would you say about yourself 100 years from now? Oh. I, I hope this well, isn't too bizarre. Oh, well, I'd, no. I'd first I'd congratulate myself on good health. Well, <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, I think, you know, this, this, first, this first album is really kind of just, uh, just the, the pier, you know, the departure point um, where I'm starting to come up with my own sound and starting to come up with a uh, uh, compositional approach yeah. and, and so identity. So tonight we hear the, the point of departure yeah. for an artist. 
And, and tell us a little bit about your band tonight that you have with you. I've heard these guys, and it's what I would call a tight jazz band. Uh, oh, yeah. The band, uh, the band tonight is, is uh, some friends of mine and, and some colleagues, uh, exceptionally talented. Uh, on the uh, piano, uh, Theron Brown is playing, and uh, he's a uh, student at the University of Akron, a, a, a very, very talented pianist. Uh, Matt Charbonneau is playing the bass. Uh, he is a, uh, also an OB, an Oberlin alum. Um, and on the drums, uh, Mark Gonder is a professor at the University of Akron. Now, this isn't the band that was actually on the album? No, different band from the album. Okay. Um, but uh, people who uh, I've played with uh, numerous times or I've admired their playing or I've yeah. heard numerous times and uh, who I'm uh, excited to be playing with yeah. tonight. Well, there was one question that people, I think, out there always want to know, which is, Tell us a little bit about your instrument. Could you grab that trumpet right there? Yeah. And tell us like where it came from and I don't know I don't know if you're interested in instruments, but it's always kind of fun. You know, where'd this thing come from? What is it? Well, um, it's a box strad. It's a pretty much the the industry standard as far as trumpets go. Uh, it's had some extra work on it by uh, by some other trumpeters uh, who uh, kind of you know, it's kind of like taking your car to a shop to be souped up. You get the trumpet from the factory, it plays good, but you take it to the shop and they really fine tune so it. So this is like a hopped up car? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, with, uh, with uh, smaller fenders. Well, I think everybody wants to hear the hot, hopped up car. So let's jump into the performance, Josh Rezepka. I am digging that music. He has a wonderful on-stage persona. His mastery of the instrument is excellent, and of course he composed everything. Super impressive, and what's next? Now we're gonna take you out and check out Tracy Amin. Now, what she's talking about here are double wall ceramics, and she's gonna explain it, but when you see them, you're gonna go, how can somebody actually create those works of art? I mean, what a delicate process. Well, let's go. Check it out. Hey everybody, this is Todd V with ArtsQuest. Today we're in the studio of Tracy Amin. It's a rare treat. We're going to learn all about double wall ceramics. Let's check it out. I've had works in the White House. I've had works in the... I still have a piece in the uh, Cooper Hewitt, the um, Smithsonian. And I've got a piece in the Wilberforce uh, Museum in their permanent archive. So I've done a lot of shows. I've won a, won a lot of awards. I'm pretty much from around here. Um, I mean, I'm from Cleveland, okay. you know. So now here I am in Chagrin Falls, Chagrin Falls Park, you know. It's this little area um, surrounded by and it's so much wonderment. That's what I think, you know. And, and I'm glad to be here. When you come from the inner city, there's so many things that you, you hear about or uh, and you, you don't really think that they really exist till you see them and go, wow, people live like this. When did you start working in ceramics? By high school. When I got to high school, and it was introduced by the art teacher, and I thought that was the coolest thing since sliced bread. I'd never seen it, you know, so looking at it and the wheel moving and the clay, and I just thought, oh my God, who invented this? You know, and, and again, being in the inner city, I never saw that. The kids in the class would throw clay away, and I would ask, you know, our teacher, you know, so is this done after it's dried? And he'd say, no, you can still use it. 